Good evening, everybody. I'm Eric Becker, editor of Words Without Borders, and I'd like to welcome you to this evening's event, World in Verse, a celebration of the 2021 Poems in Translation contest winners. We'll get started in just a few moments, but before we do, I wanted to walk you through what you can expect this evening and draw your attention to the various Zoom features that you can avail yourself of throughout the event. A note that we will be recording this event and posting it to our YouTube channel and elsewhere shortly. Uh, first, a note that we'll be muting everyone except for our participants to ensure we can hear our readers tonight. We ask that you keep yourself muted throughout the duration of the event. The evening will look something like this. After I've introduced our host for the evening, Era D. Matthews, we'll proceed to hear from her and from several of our contest winners who will be sharing their work with you tonight. We'll then have a brief conversation between Era and our winners before finishing up with audience questions. I'll also mention that this evening is a multilingual affair. We'll have readings of each winning poem in both the original language and in English translation. And for the English language portions of the event, we will have closed captioning available. To turn it on, just click the arrow next to CC on your bottom toolbar and select show subtitles. In the chat window at your right, I direct your attention to an accessibility packet, which my excellent colleague Nina is sharing right now. You'll notice on the top right of the Zoom application window, you have the option to toggle between a gallery view and a speaker view. We suggest speaker view so that you can see our readers as they perform this evening. I will note that WWB is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization, and our readers provide a crucial source of support for our mission of expanding cultural understanding through the translation, publication, and promotion of the finest contemporary international literature. We've been doing this work for 18 years now, publishing more than 2,700 works of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry by writers from more than 140 countries whose work has been translated from more than 130 languages. While our monthly magazine and rich archive at wordswithoutborders.org are free and available to all, we'd like to ask that if you like what you hear tonight, you consider giving what you can at wordswithoutborders.org slash donate. No amount is too large or too small. You can follow the link in the chat window. Also, just because we're on mute doesn't mean you can't offer your reactions to the re readings you'll hear tonight. Please use the chat window at right to offer your praise and to ask any questions you'd like to have answered during our Q&A following the performances here tonight. Finally, I'd also like to mention that if you'd like to keep up with what we do, you can sign up for our free newsletter. The link that can be found for that can be found in the chat window at right. Uh, so thanks for joining us for a special evening to celebrate the winners of the 2021 Poems in Translation Contest. Uh, we have people joining us from many different cities, uh, so if you feel so moved, please let us know in the chat window at right uh, where you're tuning in from tonight, and we'll get started in just a moment. All right. So... Oh, could uh, somebody... Boa noite e bo good evening. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with all of you. Hi, everybody. It's an honor and a pleasure. Is it okay? Hi, Conce. So, absolutely. That we're so glad uh, we were able to have you join us in the end. We're going to put you um, on mute for just a second while we do some introductions, um, and then we will. Uh, get you spotlighted uh, very soon. So glad you could join us. This is uh, one of our readers tonight, Conceição Lima, joining us from uh, Sao Tomé e Príncipe. Um, Thank you. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Uh, so this is the third year we've partnered with the Academy of American Poets uh, to spotlight the work of poet translator duos from around the world through the Poems in Translation contest. We've been publishing the two winning poems selected by contest judge in this evening's host, Era D. Matthews, in the Academy's Poem A Day newsletter and on wordswithoutborders.org. To give you an idea of the competition, we began this year with 606 poems from 327 poets in 79 countries, 
translated from 61 languages. From several finalists, Era selected two winning poems, which you'll hear tonight. For those of you who want to learn more about the contest, I direct you to the link in the chat window just now, where as of this coming Saturday, you can find all the winning poems presented in both English translation and in the original language and accompanied by audio recordings of the poets and translators themselves reading their work. These poems are also being published in the Academy of American Poets Poem a Day newsletter, which reaches half a million subscribers worldwide and which you can sign up for at poets.org slash poem a day, everything together. Uh, we are grateful and thrilled to have partnered with the Academy again this year and for the Academy's commitment uh, to poetry in translation. Uh, that's enough for me. Uh, I'd like to start by introducing Era, uh, who served as judge for this year's contest. I'll direct you, uh, the link, you to the link for her full bio, excuse me, uh, in the chat window, but we'll share the highlights here. Uh, Era D. Matthews is the author of Simulacra, winner of the 2016 Yale series of Younger Poets and a 2020 Pew Fellow. Her work has appeared in Callaloo, Best American Poets, Harvard Review, American Poet, Los Angeles Review of Books, Tin House, and elsewhere. A past recipient of the Rona Jaffa Foundation Writers Award and the Lewis Untermeyer Scholarship from Breadloaf Writers Conference, she is an assistant professor at Bryn Mawr College. Matthews is at work on her second collection, Mundane Gods. Uh, Ira has been uh, very generous and passionate in her role as judge for this. Uh, and as you'll likely glimpse from her remarks, a true champion of our winners and their work. Uh, and with that, uh, Era, I'll just thank you and hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Eric. One of the great things about judging a contest like this is the opportunity to be one of the first people to read poems from around the world written in languages other than English. It's a comforting thing to know that these poets and translators are out there in the world and giving us their all. That's why it's my pleasure to introduce you to four poet translators tonight whose work struck me, let me say floored me, and whom I was delighted to select as winners of the 2021 Poems in Translation Contest. Our first reader tonight is Lori Garcia Duenas and her translator, Olivia Lott who will be reading from their winning poem, Cerro, as well as another collaboration entitled Cuatro. Lauri is a poet, playwright, novelist, and journalist born in San Salvador, El Salvador, who has received numerous awards in El Salvador and Mexico for her work. Olivia's translation of Lucia Estrada's Carabazas was shortlisted for the 2020 Penn Award for Poetry and Translation. She is Nolin Fellow and PhD candidate at Washington University in St. Louis. You'll be able to find a link to their winning poem in the chat window to your right. And I'll just like to briefly read from the citation I wrote about the work. Though birthed on an altogether different continent in an altogether different country, Cerro moves with the same lush rebellion an avant-garde flair as a poem in the 20th century infrarealist movement. Marked by a free, fluid, and layered aesthetic, readers leave this work with a sense of the author's urgent integration of art and life. Though unrestrained by grammatical structure, this translation heightens craft by presenting the implicit and explicit, the personal, and shared experience as duly embedded. I give you Lauri Garcia Duenas. Zero. A ver. Listo. <sighs> Un cigoto de frío vive en mi corazón. El olvido tiene tu sombra. Sabes enumerar los escalones que nos separan. Sabes el punto en que ocurre mi ebullición 
Hoy fui la misma de siempre, la que no ves quebrar sin pliegues, la porno sentimental que quiere romper una piñata. La ciudad persiste en sus alambres rotos, los hombres de la calle son fantasmas que rondan. Intempestiva fuga la mía, aprendo a rechazar tu castigo cotidiano. El opresor se nutre del dolor de los vencidos. Los vencidos van a revelarse. Los perros saben del aullido, pero las perras gritan también. Nada es absoluto en el reino animal. Tengo que irme de acá. La falta de movimiento me está matando. No nací para ser una figura sedentaria coleccionando huecos y sangre. Quiero dormir rodeada por los faroles de la Alameda Central en una isla del Caribe. Calco mi letanía en los cuadernos, hago planes de todo lo que quiero escribir. Soy naif y quiero comerme el, el mundo a zarpazos. Hombre que huye en bicicleta, excusas temporales para la misma certeza. Delirio de ti sobre mi carne sin voluntad. El rostro de la víctima en tu mano, mi rostro de víctima en tu mano. Quiero romper el cordón umbilical que nos ata. Me cansé de ser la mitad de tu incertidumbre. La demencia de Sísifo, no repetir el camino. Voy a aventar piedras, voy a lapidar a la vieja mujer que se metió en mis arterias. Intrusa, no quiero vivir desangrándome. La yo renacida va a romper cadenas de centenaria tortura. Voy a luchar contra el fascismo primordial, ahora sí, ahora sí. Voy a respirar, llorar, coleccionar primaveras amotinándose, paisajes lacustres y marítimos. El vecino tiene problemas de cama. Mis asuntos son más complicados que una sábana de cinco esquinas. ¿Cuántas personas caben en una relación enmohecida? La existencia es la mueca de Dios burlándose. No me gustan sus chistes. Hay que poner el cuerpo en la escritura, el cuerpo en la escritura, el cuerpo. Desterrar el pensamiento, perdición del hombre nuevo. Hay que quemar la ropa vieja, cumplir 30 años, irse de viaje, matar el tiempo de una vez, flotar desnudos en las fuentes verdes. Caminar descalzos por el pavimento, convertirnos en mendigos para dejar de sufrir, dinamitar el pasado, a luz que arrastró el paraíso, presente, ven a limpiar la cocina, a pagar las cuentas, a dormir conmigo, lluvia cernida sobre la Ciudad de México, ábrenos las fauces, a reír a los niños, ladrar a los perros, metáforas simples de nosotros, he perdido la llave del gas, He perdido todo lo que fuimos. No me digas recuerdo, no digamos morir. Tengo hambre. Yo digo ruido celestial y el cielo de la ciudad se cae. Larry and I would like to thank Words Without Borders, the Academy of American Poets, and especially ERA for selecting this poem. We're so happy to have the opportunity to read alongside Conceição and Shuk. Zero. A cold zygote lives in my heart. Oblivion has your shadow. You know how to count the stairs between us. You know at what point I begin to boil. They took the tops off the manholes on my street today. I was the same as always today. The woman you never see break into folds a porn star of feelings who wants to smash open a piñata. The city lingers in its broken wires. The men on the street are ghosts who wander around. Mine is an untimely escape. I learned to reject your daily punishment. The oppressor feeds on the pain of the defeated. The defeated are going to rise up. The boy dogs know about the howling, but the girl dogs yell too. Nothing is absolute in the animal kingdom. I have to get out of here. The lack of movement is killing me. I wasn't born to be a sedentary figure collecting holes in blood. I want to sleep surrounded by the streetlights on Alameda Central on a Caribbean island. I trace my enumeration in notebooks. I make plans for what I want to write. I'm naive and I want to devour the world with a bang. Man fleeing on a bicycle, fleeting excuses for the same certainty. 
delirium of you unwillingly over my flesh, the victim's face in your hand, my victim face in your hand. I want to snap the umbilical cord tying us together. I'm tired of being half of your uncertainty, the Sisyphean madness of not repeating the course. I'm going to throw stones. I'm going to stone the old woman who found her way into my arteries, trespasser. I don't want to keep on bleeding out. My reborn eye is going to break the chains of centenary torture. I'm going to fight primeval fascism this time. This time I'm going to breathe, cry, stockpile, mutinous springs, lack of stream landscapes, maritime landscapes. The neighbor has bedroom problems. My issues are more complicated than a sheet with five corners. How many people fit in a moldy relationship? Existence is God making a face. I don't like his jokes. You have to put the body in writing, the body in writing, the body. Uproot thought, the new man's downfall. You have to burn the old clothes, turn 30, go on a trip, kill time once and for all, float naked with somebody in green fountains, walk barefoot on pavement, become beggars so as to stop the suffering, to blow up the past, present day paradise dragged along by deluge. Come clean the kitchen, pay the bills, sleep with me. To the rain looming over Mexico City, open your jaws for us, make kids laugh, dogs bark. Straightforward metaphors of us. I lost the gas tap, I lost all that we were. Don't say memory to me, let's not say dying. I'm hungry. Night is vengeance, I say celestial noise, and the sky over the city is crashing down. Bueno, yo eh, estaba muy nerviosa y no pude dar las gracias en español eh, y las quiero dar en español porque es mi lengua materna. Eh, muchas gracias a la Academia Estadounidense de Poetas y a la organización Palabras Sin Fronteras. Eh, es muy importante eh, el trabajo de Olivia Lott. Creo que eh, quiero darte muchas las gracias aquí hoy, Olivia. Gracias por escucharme. Y ahora voy a leer cuatro. El tiempo es una máquina, una cajita de música que ya no gira. Pobre cajita de música olvidada en la gaveta del tocador, llena de polvo. El tiempo son las manifestaciones sociales cada vez más frecuentes y menos escuchadas. La gente se queja del tráfico que causan las marchas, pero la gente no sabe que este país está cayendo a pedazos, que los países están cayendo a pedazos, que se están secando los países, pobres países. Y Elisa mandando correos electrónicos para que cuidemos el planeta, reducir, reutilizar, reciclar. Una niña en pijama corta la calle porque no hay agua en su barrio. Luchas sociales, democracias pírricas. Tu cuerpo es lo mejor de este país, dijo él, y afuera la marcha y el capitalismo salvaje. Hace cuatro años este país no era así, dijo ella. La habitación a oscuras, sus ojos brillando al filo de la luz de la lámpara. Pensamientos. El pensamiento es una larga avenida con problemas de tráfico. El tiempo es una máquina que fabrica ilusiones en masa. La música nos reproduce. Hace mucho tiempo que estamos solos y no nos dimos cuenta. En nuestra prehistoria éramos felices. Teníamos aves que volaban, globos con helio que también volaban, postales, cartas escritas a mano. Ahora es tarde, códigos binarios programas 2.0, lápices incrustados en la piel, inconclusas de ciencias verales, enfermedades del alma, animaciones 3D. Yo quiero ser una animación púrpura, quiero bailar desnuda y monocromática dentro de una cajita de música que no tenga polvo y respirar a todo pulmón una tarde en el parque hundido o en Coyoacán. Lowry began her reading by thanking Words Without Borders and the Academy of American Poets. 
Four. Time is a machine, a little music box that doesn't spin anymore. Poor little music box left there in a dresser drawer to fill up with dust. Time is more and more social protests listened to less and less. People complain about traffic caused by the marches, but people don't know that this country is falling apart, that countries are falling apart, that countries are drying up. Oh, poor countries. And Elisa sends emails about saving the planet. Reduce, reuse, recycle. A girl in pajamas crosses the street because there's no water in her neighborhood. Social struggles, pyric democracies. Your body is the best thing about this country, he said. And the march outside and capitalism, savage. This country wasn't like this four years ago, she said. The room was dark. Her eyes shined at the edge of the lamplight. Thoughts. Thought is a long avenue with traffic issues. Time is a machine that mass manufactures illusions. Music reproduces us. We've been alone a long time and we didn't realize it. We were happy in our prehistory. Birds were flying, helium balloons were flying, postcards, handwritten letters were flying. Now it's late. Binary codes, programs, 2.0. Pencils dug into skin, suffixes, unfinished sicknesses of the soul, 3D animations. I want to be a purple cartoon. I want to dance naked and monochromatic inside a little music box free of dust and breathe into my lungs an afternoon in Parque Hundido or in Coyoacan. Thank you. Thank you, Laudi and Olivia, uh, for that beautiful reading and for sharing that uh, uh, with us. Uh, one of the things we're, we're fortunate to have tonight with uh, both with Laudi and Olivia as well with Conceição and Shuk uh, is after their reading, their uh, winning selection uh, from the contest, they're sharing additional work with us. So that's, that's a real treat. Thank you. Uh, before I pass it back to Era, uh, I just want to mention again that we do have uh, an accessibility packet uh, and closed captioning available tonight. So um, you can follow along in the accessibility packet should you wish, the link for which um, is in the chat at right. Um, and you can turn on closed captioning uh, on, the, on the bar at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and I, with that, I'll hand it back to Era. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you, Lauri and Olivia. What a wonderful reading. It's one thing to read the words on the page. It's an entirely different experience when those, those pages come alive. And the reading tonight made both, trans, both the translation and the original come alive. So thank you. Our last reader is Conceso Lima, reading her poem Afro Insularity in the original Portuguese, followed by Shook, reading their English translation. They will then read additional work in Portuguese and English. Conceso Lima was born in 1961 in the island nation of Sao Tome in Principi, where she resides today. She has published four books of poetry to date. Shook, meanwhile, makes books in Marshall, California. Their most recent translation is Mario Bellatin's Beauty Salon. You can find their winning poem this Saturday on wordswithoutborders.org and in Palma Day. I'd like to read a little bit from my citation just as an entryway into these beautiful poems. This prize winning translation haunts. In the vein of a paracolonial text, the poem examines the specters of a racialized human commodity and its ecological aftermath. As if magic or conjure, Afro-insularity launches with hints of ghosts and ends in a colony of haints. The reading of each deftly written and interpreted line thrusts the reader to beautifully confront the ways in which land holds the stories that history attempts to colonize and how land will out the truth until the long buried rest. Without further ado, Conceso Lima.
Conceição, can I can I unmute you here? I think you'll have to accept. Uh, let's try this again. Um, you should have a button pop up um, that will ask you to unmute and you can just accept. Conceição, are you able to are you able to see the button? Um, should pop up in the middle of your screen. There we go. Afroinsularidade. Deixaram nas ilhas um legado de híbridas palavras e tétricas plantações. Engenhos enferrujados, proas sem alento, nomes sonoros aristocráticos e a lenda de um naufrágio nas sete pedras. Aqui aportaram vindos do norte, por mandato ou acaso ao serviço do seu rei, navegadores e piratas, negreiros, ladrões contrabandistas, simples homens, rebeldes proscritos também e infantes judeus, tão tenros que feneceram como espigas queimadas. Nas naus trouxeram bússolas, quinquilharias, sementes, plantas experimentais, amarguras atrozes, um padrão de pedra pálido como o trigo e outras cargas sem sonhos nem raízes, porque toda a ilha era um porto e uma estrada sem regresso, todas as mãos eram negras forquilhas e enxadas e nas roças ficaram pegadas vivas como cicatrizes. Cada cafeiro Respira agora um escravo morto. E nas ilhas ficaram incisivas, arrogantes estátuas nas esquinas, cento e tal igrejas e capelas para mil quilómetros quadrados e o insurrecto sincretismo dos passos natalícios. E ficou a cadência palaciana da Úrsula, o aroma do alho e do zetidoshi no tempe e na ubagatela, e no calulu o louro misturado ao óleo de palma, e o perfume do alecrim e do melagincon nos quintais dos luxãs. E aos relógios insulares se fundiram os espectros, ferramentas do império, numa estrutura de ambíguas claridades e seculares condimentos, santos padroeiros e fortalezas derrubadas, vinhos baratos e auroras partilhadas. Às vezes penso em suas lívidas ossadas, seus cabelos podres na orla do mar, aqui, neste fragmento de África, onde, virado para o sul, um verbo amanhece alto, como uma dolorosa bandeira. Afro-insularity. The lofty islands, a legacy of hybrid words and gloomy plantations. Rusted mills, breathless sterns, sonorous aristocratic names, and the legend of a shipwreck on Siete Pedras. They arrived here from the north by mandate or perhaps in the service of their king. Navigators and pirates, slavers, thieves, smugglers, simple men, rebels and outlaws too, 
and Jewish infants so tender they withered like burnt corn. On their ships, they brought compasses, trinkets, seeds, experimental plants, atrocious sorrows, a standard of stone pale as wheat, and other dreamless, rootless cargoes, because the entire island was a port and a dead end road. All its hands were black pitchforks and hoes. And there were living footprints in the fields slashed like scars. Each coffee bush now exhales a dead slave. And on the islands, they were bold, arrogant statues on street corners, a hundred or so churches and chapels for a thousand square kilometers and the insurgent syncretism of roadside Christmas shrines. And there was the palatial cadence of the Usua, the scent of garlic and zetedochi on the tempi and umagatela, and in the kalulu, bay leaves blended with palm oil, and the perfume of rosemary and of basil from the gardens on our family land. And the specters, tools of empire, melted into the insular clocks in a structure of ambiguous clarities and secular condiments, patron saints and toppled fortresses, cheap wines and shared dawns. At times I think of their pallid skeletons, their hair putrid at the edge of the sea. Here in this fragment of Africa where facing the south, a word rises high like a painful flag. And now we're gonna we're gonna hear a few more poems from Conceição and Shuk, uh, beginning with one called Proposal. Proposta. Apaguem os canaviais, os cacauzais, os cafezais, rasurem as roças e a usura de seus inventores, estirpem a paisagem da verde dor de sua íris e eu vos darei uma narrativa obliterada, uma esparsa nomenclatura sedenta de heróis. Proposal. Efface the cane plantations, the coffee and cacao plantations. Scour them and the usury of their inventors. Eradicate the landscape of green pain from your iris. And I will share an obliterated narrative, a sparse nomenclature parched for heroes. Thank you both. And now, plantation. Rosa. Rosa. Perguntam os mortos por que brotam raízes dos nossos pés? Por que teimam em sangrar em nossas unhas as pétalas dos cacaueiros? Que reino foi esse que plantamos? Plantation. The dead ask, why do roots sprout from our feet? Why do the petals of the cacao trees insist on bleeding on our nails? What was this kingdom that we planted? And now, passenger. Passageira. A memória de São Gracia Silva. Nosso o caminho, um claro itinerário. Erguíamos o alfabeto do hino. Práticas, concretas, robustas. Era como se elas te conhecessem as palavras. Giravas entre nós com um zumbido de abelhas. Havia sempre pressa nos teus lábios, florias, 
vamos, urgias, e o verbo marchava por seus pés. Depois, com um sorriso, dormias. Era como se te pertencesse a noite, limpa de trevas. Às vezes, chegavas tarde. Era como se nos devolvesses o alvoroço da colmeia. Polem agora, raiz ou tronco embora, em vão bailam por ti as crinas da palmeira quando o cavalo galopa no umbral da praça. Passenger Ours the path, a clear itinerary. We raise the hymn's alphabet. Practical, concrete, robust. It was as if they knew you, the syllables. You spun among us with the buzzing of the bees. There was always hurry on your lips, blossoming. Let's go, you urged, and the word marched on your feet. Later, with a smile, you slept. It was as if night belonged to you, clean of darkness. Sometimes you arrived late. It was as if you returned the hives bustling to us. Pollen now, though root or trunk, the manes of the palms dance vainly for you when the horse gallops past the threshold of the plaza. And we'll close uh, this reading by Conceso and Shook with the other landscape. A outra paisagem. Da lisa extensão dos areais, da altiva ondulação dos coqueirais, do incindo aroma do pomar, do azul, tão azul do mar, das cintilações da luz no poente, do ágil sono da semente, de tudo isto e do mais, a redonda lua, orquídeas mil, os canaviais, de maravilhas tais falareis vós. Eu direi dos coágulos que mineram a fibra da paisagem, do jazigo nos pilares da cidade e das palavras mortas, assassinadas, que sem cessar, porém, renascem na impura voz do meu povo. The other landscape. Of the smooth extension of the sand, of the haughty waving of the coconut palms, of the infinite scent of the orchard, of the seas blue, so blue, of the scintillations of light at dusk, of the seeds agile sleep, of all of this and more, the round moon, a thousand orchards, the sugarcane fields, of such wonders will you speak. I will tell of the blood clots that splotch the fiber of the landscape from the deposit in the pillars of the city and of the dead words, murdered, that are endlessly, nevertheless, reborn in the impure voice of my people. Thank you so much uh, to Era, to Conceição, to Shuk, uh, to Olivia, and to Lauri uh, for those uh, wonderful readings. Um, we're going to we're going to transition now. Um, Era is going to lead uh, a question and answer session with our winners, um, and then we will follow that up um, with uh, audience questions as well. So be sure to put any questions you have um, in the chat at right, and we'll get to as many of those as we can. Era, would you like to take it from here? I sure would. Thank you so much, Eric. And thank you, Conceso and Shook, for that amazing reading. Um, I think I'll start with our last set of writers and translators. Uh, I'll start with Conceso and Shook. Afro-insularity, one of the two winning poems in this year's contest, not only breathes history in each line, but also place. 
and in particular the ways in which the land retains the traces of, of, of history, at least official history, which is so often swept under the rug, forgotten. Conceso, how is this reflective of your poetry more broadly? Uh, thank you very much, Erin. Uh, I, I, I would say that being fully aware that uh, uh, of the, the, the distinction between history as history and poetry as poetry, um, there's an intersection uh, of uh, history, uh, poetry uh, of, of history in my poetry. Uh, history is a source of inspiration uh, along uh, my poetry and uh, um, uh, it summons the poetic words. Um, uh, 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 it crosses my poetry. I would say that uh, uh, some of my poetry uh, are fed by history, uh, the memory of, of history, the reminiscence of history, the violence and injustice of history, the crimes of history. And uh, it, it is as if the poetic words aspire to uh, enlighten, to shed some light, some clarity on the hidden episodes, the buried episodes, the forgotten episodes. Uh, try not to let, to forget uh, the cruelty. Uh, all we know about the slavery, colonialism, neocolonialism, etc., and 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 give. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, it's maybe a, 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 a deep um, uh, aspiration. Try to give back some dignity mm -hmm. to res resurrect in some way those erased, shattered assassinated by history. Thank you so much. That It reads that way. There, there is a voice there that has been resurrected in these poems. And I thank you for the work. Shook, I was wondering if you could speak to the ways this manifests what Conceso was talking about with history as almost like a haunting, how it manifests and it relates to the translation. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you very much, Hera, and, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Words Without Borders, and the fantastic team there. Thanks to the Academy of American Poets. Thanks to my, my fellow winners, uh, to writers I very much admire. And thank you, Sao, of course, for your poetry and for being awake in the middle of the night uh, in Sao Tome. You somehow look fresher than I do. <laughs> I think one of the things that initially attracted me to Concesa's poetry was the presence of history mm -hmm. and was, but Sal manages something really special, I think, in, in the way she, there's so much history in her poetry, but as she said, you know, she, she thinks of history as history and poetry as poetry. The, the history never overwhelms the poetry. If, if anything, I think it's <laughs> the, the beauty of her imagery and, and how much her imagery brings us into the present, the present moment, um, Sao Tome and Principe today, mm -hmm. uh, particularly through its images of the natural world. I, I think it's a, a balance that is particularly her own. And, you know, I've certainly gone to the library, done a lot of research uh, about some of the 
the facts and figures behind this history. And I've also had some really wonderful conversations with, with Conceição about, about Sao Tome and history, about literary history. I, I went to Sao Tome for about a month, several years ago now, thinking that we would translate her work together. And what we wound up doing instead was just talking every day. It was a wonderful education and a, a great act of friendship that I still reflect fondly on most days. I think in terms of translation, I, I'm not sure how it, how it has affected my, my translation of her work in, in direct ways. Um, I think there's definitely, I, I think I'm aided by the fact that she and her poetry is so often humanizing history, whether talking about the past or the present. And that certainly gives me as a translator a way to, to connect with that language without having to bear significant uh, scholarly apparatus or, or even just the, the historical information feeling burdensome or heavy. Mm. Excellent. Well, thank you both for your work. Um, it was an extraordinary collaboration, and you can tell through that translation and the original work, just incredible. There was a kinship there that reads through. So thank you for that. May I, uh, am I allowed to uh, uh, express my deepest gratitude to the magazine World Without Borders? Uh, uh, through his editor Eric Becker, the Academy American Academy of Poets, the Judge Aaron Matthews, uh, to salute warmly the poet, fellow poet Laurie Garcia Duenas, um, uh, my great friend, my uh, friend and uh, translator David Shook who spoke so tenderly about my poetry and all this wonderful team that, that made possible, is making possible this event. So I'm deeply grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Conceição. Thank you. I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and uh, give Lauri and Olivia a chance to uh, answer. I have so many questions, but I'll just limit it to a couple. <laughs> Lauri, you've had your work translated into several languages, Arabic, Catalan, English, German, Italian, and now English. Um, you've lived and worked in Mexico for 15 years and have now returned to El Salvador where you grew up. Have these experiences of seeing the ways your work changes between languages and also spending a significant period of your life living in a country other than your own how has that influenced your poetry in some direct way? Thank you. Thank you for all. Uh, thank you for, in, in Spanish, aérea es eh, aérea. <laughs> eh, thank you eh, to Academy of American Poets. Thank you for uh, words without borders. Very thank you to Eric M. B. Becker uh, and all the team. And my uh, my te text. I am uh, 41 years old, and the first time someone translated a text of mine, I was 26. Behind every translation, there is a beautiful story. Curious people have translated me into Catalan, German, Arabic, English, and Italian in different projects. Behind the poem we share today, there, there is also a story. The deep story between a writer and a translator. Thank you, Olivia. Write to me is to believe that someone is listening. 
you hear me, Olivia? And thank you for all. About my history in Mexico, it is beautiful and hard. Uh, definitely my life and my writing are crossed by migration because I am a Latin girl. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful answer. Olivia, you've translated other poets, among them Lucia Estrada from Colombia, and you're a scholar of neo-avant-garde poetics in 1960s Latin America. Where does translating Lauri's poetry fit within the larger context of your own work? Thank you so much for that question, Era. I think I, I am most drawn to poetic projects that use innovative form as an avenue for grappling with really intense subject matter. And that's something that I see in my research on 1960s neo-avant-garde poetry and its fusion of revolutionary radical politics with avant-garde form. And that's something that I see in, in different ways in Lucia Estrada's Catabasis and in Lauri's El, El, El Tiempo es un texto indecifrable. And I, I would also add that in my work as a translator, I very consciously choose to, to translate works that are underrepresented in some way in the canon of Latin American poetry and translation in the United States, whether that's because of the aesthetics of the project or the gender or national origin of the writer. And so women are much less translated than men into English and especially women from Central America. And writers from Central America, I think also face uh, undue expectations for a specific time of, type of realist writing. And I think that Lowry's poetry uh, fuses experimental poetic form with political content in a really interesting way. And so that's something that I'm really, really drawn to. And it's these poems that she's written are incredible and it's, it's a big privilege to be able to, to work on this book. Thank you for that answer, Olivia. Thank you both, Lauri and Olivia, for the work um, and delivering what we can count to be like the future in the face of collaboration. Um, it's really important for us writers to be able to get outside of ourselves and inside of others. And translation strikes me as exactly that type of project. I'm gonna hand it over to Eric, who is going to garner some questions from the audience and you'll be able to ask or answer more questions. Great, thanks so much, Era, and, and thanks to our readers um, for getting us started there. Uh, a reminder that uh, if you have questions, you can put them um, in, the, in the chat box here at right. Um, while we wait um, for, for some more of those, I will get started. Um, ah. Well, actually, we have one from, from Karen here, in fact, uh, which is a, a good question. Um, and I, I, I think probably everyone can answer here, all of our, all of our winners. Uh, will we have book length work um, by the poets uh, in English soon? Is that, is that on the horizon? I don't know. Um, yeah, Laudi, go ahead. Eh, Olivia nos preguntan si este libro, este libro se va a publicar eh, después, ¿verdad? O en algún momento. Sí. Entonces, exactly. pero tam también quería como comentar que el libro América, que tradujo Robin Myers, está ya eh, descargable. Y este libro, ojalá un día lo publiquemos. Lowry and I are currently working on the, the full collection, the full book length collection, um, but we are looking for a publisher. And then Lowry would also like to, to say that her poem, America, translated by Robin Myers, is available. And if you Google it, you can read it online for free. And Gonzalo and I are, are working on a collection now. We'll have more information very soon. Great, terrific. Uh, we've had a few, a few more come in. Um, and I, I suppose this is more for the, um, 
for the translators. Um, and, and that question is, uh, you know, what are the inherent challenges in striking tonal balance in a translation? Uh, maybe Olivia, you want to go first and, and then Shuk, you can follow up. Sure, that's a great question. Uh, these poems from, from this whole book are really challenging to translate because um, as Erin mentioned in her, her comment on the book, there are there's no punctuation, there are no capital letters, there are no line breaks. And so uh, Lowry is really, really playing with this sort of absolute interchangeability of the beginnings and endings of verses. And oftentimes where you might choose to, to mark the end of a line when you're reading out, out loud is, is somewhat subjective. So what has been most challenging for, for this book is, is making making those decisions. And, and oftentimes I, I speak with Lowry too, to get a better sense of, of the way that the poem is structured in, in her mind. That's a really good question, Eric, and I'm, I'm really interested in Olivia's answer to that too, because uh, yeah, seeing Lowry's work on the page, I can, I can imagine that challenge. I think in, in the case of my collaboration with Concesao, I'm one really lucky that she has a really good ear in English and, you know, will often workshop lines together um, you know, I'll send her three, four versions that are slightly different and we'll kind of go over them and, and see what feels truest to the, the meaning of the Portuguese and then also what, what sounds the best, what, what is tonally right. I think one, one thing about this collaboration that I really love is I feel like we're never finished. And this was the case even with the poems we read tonight and even with the, the contest winning poem. I think as I, I think as poet translators, both of us, we're, we're always thinking about, about uh, the thornier issues and the knots that we come across. And sometimes it will be remarkable, you know, six months later, out of nowhere, seemingly, you'll find yourself sitting there staring out into space thinking about that one line from Sao's poem that you supposedly finished translating so long ago. And uh, it's right there and all of a sudden a, a spark of genius has uh, come upon you. Um, so really, I guess that's a long way of saying that I think for me in this particular instance, it's really an act of collaboration. And I'm, I'm really grateful to, to Kunzisa for that. It's one of the, the great treasures of our friendship. Well, great. Thank you for those terrific answers and to Era for, um, for that additional question. Um, it was really fascinating uh, to hear a little bit more about that process. Uh, Blackbird here asks, how often, uh, this is for translators, um, you know, when you get stuck on a phrase or an image, um, you know, can you talk a little bit about the way you resolve questions you have um, about uh, what's going on in the poem to find the heart of, a, of, of the line or a word or an image? I'm, I'm happy to begin. Um, I think it, I mean, I've, I've answered this somewhat and, you know, I don't want to, uh, lean back too hard on my other, other answer, but I, I think one of the joys of, of working with living poets in the days of the internet is that we can have those conversations. I mean, there've been instances, and, and Afro-insularity is a great example where there are so many terms, whether references to food or music or other, you know, the, the religious syncretism of the islands, where the, the language is very specific, not just to the Portuguese language, but to San Tomé and Portuguese. And one of the, the really great things about being alive today is that, you know, I can Google things and I often do. Um, although San Tomé is, is such a, a small country that, uh, 
there are many times when Google uh, does not suffice. And uh, I've asked Sal to send me pictures of things before. I've, uh, you know, I made a point when I was there a few years ago to try to taste everything that was listed in the books, um, or at least get as close as I could. Um, I gained a, a few pounds, obviously, but I think it was worth it in the service of, of the poems. True sacrifice sounds like. Um, <laughs> Olivia, go ahead. I, I think I actually was responding to this question before because I saw it pop up, up in the chat. So just to say something briefly about Eric's question about tone too. I think with, with these poems in particular, because of how they, they work formally, what um, really what I really leaned on while translating these poems was was reading them out loud and thinking about how I would read them out loud and how that then would inform the way that I translated them. And to just add one more more specific example to um, about in reference to the second question is that there's a lot of moments in the book where the where Lowry's poems use slang that is very particular to Mexico City. And this is something that has been a challenge and we didn't read the, the poems tonight that that use uh, a lot of that slang. So that's something we're, we're still working through, but it's it's certainly a challenge to figure out a way to to translate it to to keep all the richness um, uh, in and bring it into the English. Well, if we can if we can end, I think we have have time for for one more question, um, and this is a question uh, for everyone and uh, in a sense we're we're going to end on a beginning, uh, which is with the question, um, how did uh, Shuk and Conceição, Olivia and Lauri, how did you find one another? We can begin. Um, I read Lauri's poems in an anthology of, of new poetry from Latin America called America, which is edited by Hector Hernandez Montesinos. And I read a few of her poems there and then uh, started Googling more and more of her work. And I found this book in particular, which is what, what really struck me. It's a little bit of an older book. She wrote it, she published it in, in 2012, but this was the book that um, I was so impressed with. And so then I actually contacted her on Facebook and we started collaborating from there. Thank you for Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's very uh, a great surprise when Olivia uh, write me. It's like a dream uh, because I I love when uh, my uh, the uh, the lectores uh, readers readers, readers uh, write me, and I feel like. Uh, Gas, eh, like a eh, gaseosa, bebida refrescante, like a so, like a, like it, um, it's refreshing, <laughs> very, very refreshing. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you. Shook, I don't know if you want or or Conceição either. Uh, if you want to say how, how you guys began to collaborate. Yes, I, I came across Concesao's work first through the work of the Poetry Translation Center in London, where I, I did a lot of work early in my career as a literary translator. And through them, I was uh, put in touch. I actually think it was Stefan Tobler who's uh, had um, and other um, books that um, gave me her email address. And I, I think I just wrote you, right, Conceição? Kind of out of the blue. Um, yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Sorry about that. Let me try that again, uh, this time with audio. <laughs> um, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Um, I want to start uh, by thanking once again our winners, our contest judge for taking us through this evening. Uh, it's been a real pleasure and a real privilege for all of us here. 
um, we've been fortunate, I think, to be treated to several examples of, of the robust poetry being written today across languages uh, and countries. Um, and speaking for myself and my colleagues, uh, we're only too pleased to share it here with you this evening. I would like to thank my colleagues as well, um, who, who though they uh, were not on screen, were instrumental to this evening. That includes uh, Karen Phillips, Susan Harris, Soleil David, Bruna Dantas Lobato, and Nina Perota. Um, they are, uh, they, they were as much a part of this um, as, as uh, me showing up here on screen. I, I was just lucky enough to, to speak with our poets and our uh, judge tonight. So um, thank you to you all. Um, a quick reminder that you can read the poems at wordswithoutborders.org, uh, where you can also sign up to receive um, our newsletter. Uh, I also want to jump in and quick, quickly and note uh, that if you enjoyed tonight's event in a few short weeks on October 26th, uh, we'll be hosting WWV's virtual gala uh, with a truly global cast of writers and translators uh, that includes Chumpa Lahiri, Merve Amre, Katie Kitamura, and Hamid Ismailov. Uh, that is a ticketed event uh, with proceeds going to support WWV's work in the upcoming year. Uh, and you can follow the link in the chat window at right uh, to reserve your spot. Uh, and also a note that uh, for those of you in the Eastern Hemisphere, we will have a separate edition of that gala being held on October 27th. Um, and, and the link for that uh, to reserve your spot there is also available um, in the chat window. Thanks again, uh, everyone, for joining us and being uh, part of this special evening. Um, it's been really great for all of us here at Words Without Borders. Hope it was for you. Uh, so long. <laughs>